um, I want to wrap up with what we did on top of the WISE technology that we were able to use. And um, as a quick reminder, we used our own source control plugin. That was really because our pipeline, as our asset pipeline is, um, I don't know if it's unique, but at least it's, uh, it's special in some case. Would be interested to hear how other companies um, do, do that part. We developed that uh, quad delay plugin that, that sits there, uh, which takes the, um, that drives the reverb. We have Dolby Atmos. And then we did a bunch of code changes with the assistance of WISE. And um, sometimes I assume that when I mail with a problem or with something that maybe the gut reaction is, oh, it's the, the German guy again trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I mean the good thing is we all work on the same goal, and I think it's great that that Wise is presented um, as being a very key part in the success of Overwatch. And so some of the things we did was um, we uh, and maybe you can ignore half of it. It's just for the documentation part. We increased the parameter ID size back to 64K because we had trouble running our quad delay plugin, which uses so many RTPCs. More, more than 64. We are logging when we cannot find a VEM file in our cache, which speeds up our audio importer. Um, we actually coded out the WISE tool that we can have multiple platforms, like inclusions, that one sound is active for Xbox, but not for PlayStation. We actually had user errors in that area, and I said, I just want to turn it off, and we actually made a code change that our, our ver version of the WISE tool doesn't even allow it. All platforms are 100% identical. Um, and then we worked with Martin on um, call feed, uh, profiling callbacks, which was really helpful for us to understand where is our time being used. And we had some trouble with actually Lucio and the reading of the RTPC value that then I would publish as a data flow. And then our effect, the effects on the animation actually on the little um, uh, speaker were dr being driven by sound. We had some uh, problems about when, uh, when is the best time in our frame to ask that question, and we saw stalls. And actually, that profiling callback system helped us to call now for an RTPC value with zero latency. Um, and then we had um, some recent uh, problems with allocating uh, memory, and we wanted to use the profiler. And there were some changes there as well, which was great to get a really fast um, support. And uh, for that, I, I think everyone that I bugged over the last three years or six years. Um, some of the stuff the, that we still struggle with is our build time, um, the part where we compare against the database and we want to understand which are the, s the sounds and the bank data and everything that we want to upload. Um, we used to have a, bo a bottleneck on the sound bank uh, default work unit until then we pulled that out. Everything is driven now by this system called a bank definition file. But now we have other um, uh, bottlenecks that we can work on because um, our game designers have to sync all the latest data before they can submit after a build. And that's what we are working on right now actively to, to allow Scott and Paul to just work and check in. And then an automated process will pick that up. Right now, with Overwatch being released, we have multiple branches. We are working on new patches and new content. Um, so we are obviously in a multiple branch scenario where um, different sound designers work in different branches. We trickle down our work unit changes. We have to merge them. It would be great uh, maybe that we are currently investigating a special XML-based merge software instead of the, the merge software that we use, which would be um, Perforce Merge or Araxis Merge. Um, we are currently in the process of taking the user soundcaster sessions out of our source control because of that. These are the most um, work units that receive merge conflicts if we trickle them through three, four layers of branches. Um, this is what I said. We, we were working actively on no need to sync and that we can just check any time, which would allow uh, a faster iteration time. Um, we, we do have long project reloads. We are still evaluating if we can um, use SoundFrame. We are not using SoundFrame right now, which is a little bit of a library that would sit in our world editor and that could connect with the live instance of WISE um, and to speed that up. Oops, that was the wrong one. And then um, 
we're currently going through an investigational phase of how our music banks are replicating uh, our metadata. And if we are changing a little piece of music, right now we are checking out a lot of music banks. And uh, I would like to isolate that because obviously for patch sizing, we want to only ship the delta that we actually need to. So yeah, in, but in, in the end, to wrap that up, I think the whole presentation showed how successful and um, um, efficient and creative we were able to work with WISE as a tool. This, is, this shouldn't, so I'm skipping that. That shouldn't be the last thing you should remember <laughs> out of this meeting. Um, but I think Scott can talk a little bit about design as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I echo what Tomas says. It was it was a overall a very uh, pleasurable experience working with Wise. But there's some things that um, uh, you know we learned. Uh, you know, always are learning more. I've been working with Wise now for eight years, but I still feel like there's so much that I I don't know the best way to use things. Um, so there's there's just a lot to learn with this, um, and there's a lot of different ways that things can be used. So the more that we share information like this. Um, I think it helps the community as a whole, and I think I, I appreciate uh, Wise having us here uh, to talk with you today. Um, hopefully, there'll be more of these when, when you guys are sharing, and we could come check it out. Um, but yeah, so the, the, as you mentioned, the patch size is a, is a big issue for us. Uh, it's something that we're actively tackling. Um, the additive low pass thing is really less than ideal um, in, in many of our scenarios, and that one, if there's anything we could fix, um, that would probably be the first one I would uh, get fixed. Um, the search in WISE is actually very hard to use. I don't know if you guys have had this experience. You go up there and then you click away and then it's like, where'd my search go? And then you go back and then, oh, I need to go into sync number four over to this and click. And you're like, okay. You know, it'd be nice if some of those um, were a little more refined over time. Um, and the WISE uh, profiler, while it's super powerful, uh, it's really hard to tell what you're spending your CPU on. You, I mean, we know we're pushing WISE pretty hard. I mean, we have RTPs at, RTPCs at the top level of every layer of every single sound. They're always changing and modulating. I don't know if that's why our CPU is somewhat high. I don't. I mean, you know, is it the AUG settings that we're using in our conversion settings? Um, it's very hard for us to know what we can do to optimize our CPU usage. Um, but overall, it's just been extremely successful. Uh, we've had a, a total blast working on this game, and uh, we feel like we've um, been able to, to put together some really interesting tech that uh, helps make it a better game. So to, to wrap up, we're going to show two last videos. Um, this first one is going to be a before video that shows all the things we talked about today turned off. So we have, a, we have a, a feature in our game that allows us to do replays. We use it for our kill cams and stuff. So um, we can take the same gameplay scenario, hook up Wise, and turn off all of our features. And then we um, play the same thing back with all the features turned on. And you can sort of see uh, what you think. You know, One version doesn't have any occlusion, doesn't have any quad delay, no doesn't importance. have any voices, no what? Importance. No importance system. Um, so it's, it's a, a, a very different take on the game. I think it still sounds good, but not as easy to follow. Um, but you be the judge yourself. And, and a quick uh, story about that. There was really literally a few days before our GDC talk. And um, it was, it's Scott and me in that game. The, the two or three other heroes are, are bots that we just spawned. And I mean, it was the first take. We didn't script anything. Like I, it might come across a little bit too perfect maybe or not. But it was, it was kind of awesome that we just jumped in. We said, let's, let's play for 40 seconds and see how it goes. And then we turned everything off and turned everything on, and it was that, and that that made that was the video. Like it has nothing scripted. It's me or him and me just running around trying to shoot stuff. Yep. There you go. And we turned the color down intentionally to make to so make you could yeah sort of see. So before it's a little grayed out, but you get the idea.
the video. Here is the after. Hello. Hi. So, Tomas? Yeah, so a big shout out to um, Audio Kinetic. Thanks for having us. Uh, a big thank you to the people in, in Irvine, the whole sound department. Uh, obviously, we are just being invited here. Um, but there's a, a lot of other people, including voice, music, sound design, production, that clearly helped on uh, the game itself, but also on this presentation. And then we have the saying, it takes a blizzard to ship a game. This is the whole Team 4, our Overwatch team. Uh, a big thank you for everyone because it was really a, a big interdisciplinary achievement that we did. We were really working with sound very early on. As Scott said, the whole um, mission to play by sound was very early on. We iterated, we brought up features um, very holistically. Sound was always Im involved very early and it needs a team culture to achieve that. So thanks to, the to everyone at home. And then again, thanks for Audio Kinetics. Thanks, Simon. Take us home. Thank you very much for Thanks.